Hello, my name is Jacqueline Alvarez, and for my presentation, I will be presenting on Lee Bontecue. Beginning with Lee Bontecue's background, she was born in 1931 in Rhode Island. Uh, she began her upper, upper level education at Bradford Junior College, Massachusetts in 1952 for general education. Uh, she later went to the Art Students League in New York during 1952 to 1955 to study sculpture. In her education, she also received a Fulbright scholarship to study in Rome from 1957 to 1958. Uh, later in her career, she began teaching at Brooklyn College in 1971. Uh, Lee Bontecu is currently 89 years old and is still creating and displaying works, though her exhibitions have been less frequent. Some notable exhibitions of her, beginning with her first ever one, uh, is the Leo Costello Gallery in 1960, uh, another in 1972 at the Museum of Contemporary Art, and in 1993, uh, Parish Art Museum did an exhibition titled Sculpture and Drawings of the 1960s. Uh, in 2004, Museum of Modern Art did a retrospective Lee Bontecue, and another exhibition they did on her was in 2010, titled All Freedom in Every Sense. In 2014, Princeton University did an exhibition titled Drawn Worlds, and the most recent exhibition she has had is Revolution in the Making, Abstract Sculpture by Women in 2016. So Lee Bontecue is an American sculptor and printmaker uh, Bontecu's work falls in between the two movements of post-war abstraction and the feminist movement. Bontecu's works were greatly affected by World War II and the Cold War. The war lasted from 1939 to 1945, which was much of her childhood. The war is also what provided many female artists the opportunity to work professionally. And Bontecu is most known for her abstract sculptures from the 1960s. She also created vacuum form plastic fish, plants, and flower forms in the 1970s. So beginning with one of her most notable works is the untitled 1980 to 1999 displayed at the Museum of Modern Arts. Uh, I decided to include a video just so you can have more close-up images of this just because this video is really far back so you can see the entire sculpture. Um, and also something that's notable to mention is that all of her works are untitled. I feel that this does create that sense of openness to interpret her works whatever way you want to. And I think that's really interesting that she had like none of her works are titled at all. Uh, so this sculpture is a suspended sculpture. Uh, and this is one of the sculptures that she actually worked on for 18 years. Um, and it's composed of sections of translucent wire mess, mesh and small porcelain orbs that are attached to an intricate network of wire. And this wire and these orbs do radiate uh, off of the one central porcelain, blue, the blue porcelain orb that's in the middle. And uh, this work does really create the theme or show off the theme of exploring the universe. And this could be influenced from the space age, which was also um, in the 50s and 60s when Sputnik was launched. Uh, so it's interesting that this had that a lot of like the small white orbs do have a resemblance to stars and these different shapes have the resemblance to planets and it kind of reminds you of the Milky Way, though it does have sort of an abstract and industrial look to it. And it's interesting to note that um, this is one of, in the exhibition called All Freedom in Every Sense at the Museum of Modern Art. And it's, that's one of her quotes is that she wants to create or her purpose in art is to create art that encompasses as much of life as possible as no barriers no boundaries all freedom in every sense and this once again does correlate to how she leaves all of her works untitled because they're not defined to one meaning and they they're open to interpretation and uh, another couple of her works are these vacuum form pieces. Uh, for this one on the left of the fish, I was unable to find the date for it. Um, though on the right, it, it's the untitled 1967. And these were made using clear plastic over, or vacuum forming clear plastic over shapes that were carved in styrofoam. Uh, these once again kind of have that juxtaposition of organic yet unorganic and sort of mechanical feel to them, especially this fish on the left, as it, you can see where the planes intersect and the, where they're held together by those pins. 
And on the right, you have these otherworldly uh, plants as they don't exist in, on Earth, but they do have that sort of organic feel to them. Um, and it's interesting to think about how these works look really fragile, yet they have a sense of violence to them because of how sharp uh, their edges are. Um, and moving on, Lee Bontecu also does have quite a bit of drawings. And this is one of them titled or untitled uh, from 1957. And it is set on paper. So Lee Bontecu actually developed a process where she uses a torch to produce soot on the paper. And it is left with this sort of airbrushed effect. And it does create these deep and deep and <laughs> deep saturated blacks on this paper. And you can definitely see it at the horizon line of this, this work. And uh, this, this dark black does lead to creating a sort of surreal and otherworldly atmosphere. And in this work from her 19, in 1963, and this one's at the Princeton uh, exhibition called Drawn Worlds. And this one once again does have that really deep soot in it. And this one's used this one's uh, created using graphite and soot on circular on a circular shaped stretched muslin. Uh, so in this work, you're able to see once again a recurring theme of circles and spheres. Uh, this one, although 2D, it does reminisce of the orbital uh, suspended sculpture. So Bontecu has many signature themes in her works, and one especially interesting one is this cavity-like black hole, uh, which is sort of a signature motif. Uh, for her in both her sculptures and her drawings. Uh, and then here we see how it is reflected in her, her sculpture. So this is also at the, in Freedom in All, All Freedom in Every Sense exhibition at the Museum of Modern Arts. Uh, this one is from 1959. And in this sculpture, we once again see uh, the black hole that is at the central, almost central point of the work. And it does became a it this it does become a huge focal point for the work, and it brings the viewer's eye in, and it creates an unknown sem sense of depth to the viewer, and it does create a sense of like ominous and ambiguity to the work. Uh, so most of her sculptures take the form of organic shapes. Uh, these, much like this one, they uh, she has created a bunch of different versions of this. They consist of welded steel frames that are covered with uh, scavenged materials. So this one has recycled canvas that she actually scavenged, scavenged from a conveyor belt from a laundromat. And it does have industrial materials such as the steel. And uh, she, in this work, it's actually interesting. She, ha she uses raw hide and at the exhibition uh, that they had this at, they found out that she had used raw, rawhide because of the curator. And if they hadn't curated it, they would have never known because they actually had this for like 50 years. And then they found out because they were exhibiting it um, that it had rawhide as a material. And uh, this once again shows that her, her aesthetic theme of me mecha mechanical and orga organic, me organic forms sort of meshing together. And she does have the abstract, abstract machine-like aesthetic as well. And that is my presentation on the Bontecu. Uh, here are my references. Uh, thank you for listening.